with Ailey Ramble and Claret and Booze. Good afternoon and welcome to the Daily Ramble here on Claret and Booze. My name's Gary and this is my Daily Ramble. Um, I'm going to jump straight into it in a second. I've got loads to talk about, but before then, please subscribe to our channel. We really need you to subscribe. We've got um, about 40% of people who watch these shows and you notice we don't put hardly any ads on our shows, right? That's because... And, and we, we do that voluntarily. We decide not to make much money out of this, right? But the one thing we do get, we do like, is subscribers and views and likes and stuff like that. So if you watch our stuff regularly, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you don't know how to, you need a Google account to do it. If you don't know how to do that, get in touch. We'll let you know how. Okay, so on onwards and upwards, uh, here we go. So uh, later on in the show, I will discuss the management situation. Uh, there are a few things, quite a few things I've got to say about that, actually. It's not as it might seem, I believe. Um, but first, only two games to go until we're out of purgatory, finally. The end of the 23-24 season, or shall we call it the David Moyes season, because that's what it's been. It's been all about David Moyes, right? The whole damn season has been dedicated to him, let's face it, dedicated to how great he is. Since January, it's been about him forcing a new contract through the media. He's, he's, um, he's failed miserably and thought picking a fight with Tim would be a great idea. Um, but then the team got bashed up again for the umpteenth time, and he got the sack, deservedly. So, uh, so finally he's going. That big black cloud of doom is lifting from over the London Stadium. And Saturday, I'm pleased to say, is the very, very final time ever that we will see David Moyes managing a West Ham football team at the London Stadium. Uh, yeah, I hope so anyway. The club are planning a good send-off, you know, but but will I clap? Will I clap him? Because frankly, at the moment, I hate him. I do. That's where I'm, that's where I'm at with him. But let me explain. Let me explain, because my decision might surprise you. And to answer it, to, to answer the, the, whether I'm going to clap or not, uh, I've got to go back two years ago to uh, me of the past. And uh, two years ago, I, I was quite happy, right? I think the COVID season was borderline spectacular we were at home i was in my shed here we were watching things games on zoom and it was fantastic right nobody could say otherwise i have made videos to debunk all of these achievements but at the same time I, i've got to take it on face value and not be disingenuous and not tell you how i felt at the time right and at the time i was very happy and so um and then and then you've got the uh the second season where we got to the Europa League semi-final we beat Sevilla one of the greatest nights at London Stadium we beat Leon and um again I've got to say I was quite happy I was a bit annoyed about January and I didn't realize that had come back to bite us in the ass again uh, I thought it was a one off but it wasn't uh, but anyway at the time I was happy so I can't lie about that and then um, I wanted him fired last year because it was a terrible league season after the World Cup uh, or before the World Cup. That's when I finally snapped. Um, but nonetheless, you know, the, the Cup triumph goes down on his CV as his win, right? So I've got to give him credit for that as well, right? You know my thoughts on this, but I've got to say it was one of the best nights to be a West Ham supporter, the best experiences to be a West Ham supporter in recent times. So if you take the first two years and the cup win, it would be disingenuous to say, of me to say that I haven't enjoyed some of his time here, because I have. Last two years have largely been awful, cup win aside. So, um, so COVID, first Europa run, and then the Conference League. And so will he get a clap from me? I think on that basis, yeah, he will. And I don't want to be, I don't want to be, a, you know, a mug. I don't want to be, I don't want to be uh, all childish and ruin people's day. There's a lot of people who love him and I, and I appreciate that. You can love him if you like. I don't, but you can love him if you like. But I'm not going to try and ruin someone's day by, you know, and I hope people don't start booing and stuff like that as well. Please don't. Um, let's make it nice. Let's create a good atmosphere because I assume it's going to happen before the game and get the team off on the right foot, and hopefully he'll pass back by letting them off the leash to play football like they can. And we should beat Luton if we do that, right? Stay in the top half at least. Um, and so, look, that, that's, um, that, 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 is, that is David Moyes. Um, however, if you look at what's happened this week and, and the narrative, especially the last since it's been announced a couple of, I think it was last night, wasn't it, or the night before, but anyway... Um, the response from the media has been has been so gushing, it's almost made me nauseous. Um, I do, I'm not going to quote their nonsense because that just gives them, that you know, their views oxygen. I'm not going to do that. But I do have 
two joint pricks of the week this week. And they are none other than Paul Merson. And guess who is second prick of the week? Chris Sutton. He does that podcast for the BBC. I'm not even going to advertise his name. If you want to see it, go find it, right? It's a daily podcast on a Monday. If you want to get wound up, go and listen to Sutton. Fuck me. I had to turn it off. It was just, it, it was, I wanted to, either that or smash my phone up, right? I couldn't do it anymore. Anyway, look, uh, those pair of idiots and many others are trying to pretend that four and a half years were fantastic, brilliant. You know, not not the fact we've had to sit through the uh, the worst defensive season in the Premier League ever. It's been diabolical. You know, when you consider uh, the, the, the games we should have lost and the ones we sneaked right at the end, you know, very few we've lost that we should have won as well. Put it like that. We've been stuffed so many times. It's painful. Um, it just becomes normal now. It becomes normal. Uh, the new normal, getting beat 5-0 or, or conceding 5. We're lucky to still be ninth. I don't know how we're doing it. We, we might not be. If we don't beat Luton, who will be up for it. You, you look at the surges at the moment of Crystal Palace. They can catch us. They were miles behind a few weeks ago. And they're good, as we found out. Bournemouth and who's the other one? Brighton. They were all putting together late surges. And that's dangerous. That, should, that could have us in 11th or 12th. So I do hope we win on Saturday because I don't want to be in the bottom half. Um, but let's go back to David Moyes. You know, it, it, the messaging that came out of the club was all very glorious and everything else. Make me make me feel like they were planning a statue. Hope not. Um, but for some reason, he came out and said, uh, called us a great club that he was proud to manage. Well, this is not the same sort of subservient David Moyes that we've, that we've seen recently, where he's pretty much been throwing the club's stature under a bus, more or less saying, and his mates in the media, saying we're lucky to have him. Which we know is absolute nonsense, right? I mean, he's a he's, he's a decent manager, but he's a middle of the road manager who lucked out, you know, getting into a competition that you know where he had the strongest side. So, uh, so look, but I'm not going to go back on that one. Uh, but as for people repainting the whole four and a half years as a roaring success, well, they can just go away because objectively it wasn't a roaring success. Just look at the stats; it's, just, it's there. The records are there. You can't repaint history, right? Um, he had two excellent seasons in Europe. This season in Europe, Leverkusen was the highlight, but on the large, it was underwhelming. We lost to Freiburg once. We lost to Olympiakos once. We only had to play... We played Freiburg four times. We played Leverkusen twice. We we fucked it up out there. And, and really, the highlight was was the home draw, which was fantastic, right? But again, it's just... It's just that David Moyes psychology of when it comes to a big game of just binning it. Right, just going for defence at all costs, which is what he did at Chelsea on Saturday, and what he tried to do in the quarter final of the League Cup with a with a, a below strength side, and we got slaughtered, another slaughtering. We also got knocked out of the FA Cup to Bristol City, uh, and we could be finishing eleven or eleven for twelve if it if it carries on going this way. So, so it's clear this has been an awful season, a really awful season. He'll say two quarter finals. You beat Lincoln City and an understrength Arsenal to get to the quarterfinal of the League Cup. You beat Freiburg and Olympiakos and Bakatopola, was them, wasn't it, to get to the quarterfinal of the Europa League. It wasn't Leon and Seville again, was it? So look, I mean, the, the, you know, you can call out the high level stats, but the high level stats don't put don't stand up to scrutiny, do they? Um, but look, he will get a clap from me. He will get a clap from me. Uh, but I hope he never comes back, please. Don't let the next manager fail. That's why whoever it is, I'm going to get behind them. He can't fail because I don't want to see him fly, you know, flown in to be the saviour again and get another three-year contract when he's inherited a good side from someone. Um, having said that, at the moment, there's a massive rebuilding job on and we've got to be patient with a new man, whoever it is. Because whatever we do next year is starting off from a baseline of 10 outfield players, right? So it's going to take a while. We've got to be patient and, and expect it to be a tough start to the season without any shadow of a doubt, right? One final thing on this. As for, it was either Dave, son of Dave, or, or, or Jack, son of Dave. One of the Sullivan boys. He said, he came out in his little dedication to Moyes, saying he gave him his best day ever. And um, this is a quote that really stuck in my craw. Um, He's made fans proud to support West Ham again. I'll oh, just fuck off, mate. What do you what do you think you are? Speaking on you're not speaking on behalf of me. I was here before you were born, and I'll be here after you're fucking long gone as well. 
Offspring of billionaires are a little bit like that. They look see us as the little people, the little people experiencing joy and happiness for the first time. You know, it's um, you know, probably we 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 watched it on the telly and we played the spoons around the kitchen table and then we, we happily we we leapt down the street, we skipped down the street back to the mill to get on with the late shift. Absolutely, just fuck off. Anyway, enough of that. Those people get under my skin. Don't know if you noticed. I think I hide it quite well, don't you? Um, right. Will Julian Lopetegui sign? Big question. Well, if you looked at the media yesterday, you'd think he's already signed. Um, it was being reported everywhere that deal close, terms agreed, etc., etc. Well, look, it's not close. He's one of the options. One of the options. Nick said this yesterday. And, um, and let me just clarify my position before I start this piece, before people start leaving me nasty messages. The position of everybody at Claret and Booze, including Nick, if he gets a job or someone else gets a job, whoever that new manager is, they're going to get support from us and be judged on what they deliver on the pitch. That is all. Because that's what we do. Because we have to watch the fucking games. We'll reset the counters, start again, see what happens. But let's first accentuate. Let's just assume that it's going to be Lopetegui, right? And and let's just... Um, I guess it probably will be. So we know Sullivan wants him. Um... He hasn't got a majority share, majority shareholding, so he can't just force it through. But he'll need the board support, and at the moment, I don't think he's got it. But I do know they're looking at other options at the moment. I kind of hope they wait a couple of weeks because if they if they do, then they'll have probably a few nice options in there as well, like Iriola from Bournemouth. He's on a year to year contract. He'll be out of contract at the end of the year. Uh, Deserby's leaving Brighton. He'll be theoretically out of contract. Vincent Company, he might. Oh, we might have to pay a release fee about. Two pound fifty or saying from Burnley, but uh, I know I know that two pound fifty will stick in the craw of Mister Sullivan. He don't like paying any form of release fee, but um, I, I do believe that Vincent Company is actually a decent manager, and with he's been playing in the Premier League with a Championship side, and he ain't done bad. He's just like a little bit naive to try and play that sort of football when you haven't got the players to play it right. Um, but let's go back to Lopetegui for a minute accentuate the positives because there are some positives team spirit he fosters team spirit massively he believes in when he used to be a goalkeeper right so he loves clean sheets loves a clean sheet and that's not a bad thing right because you get a clean sheet it's either a draw or a win you know makes sense doesn't it so after every clean sheet the team gets taken out all the coaches all the players of the squad go out for a team dinner you know knees up um he actually took the whole one of these team building things he does he took the whole team to watch the under 21 youth side at wolves and he he actually picked one of the under 21 players and brought him into the first team which is kind of a good sign because he actually managed he used to manage the under 19 under 20 under 21 teams for for spain so you would think he is he, one of these people that looks out for talent and if the talent's there doesn't matter how old he is hope so anyway he also managed the spanish national side uh, Craig Dawson, legend, cult hero, was quoted as saying, "When does Deser- he loved him? He loved playing for him. He said, when Deserby, sorry, Deserby, I'm getting me fucking Lopetegui, Deserby, when Lopetegui was um, standing on the on the touchline, he said, and we were playing a game. It was like we had twelve men. He kicked every ball. He lived. He lived the game with them. Right. That's good. I like that. I like an animated manager. Um, He's had several high league finishes and lots of European qualification. He's won the Europa League and the Cup and League. I don't know if it's a double or in different years, I don't know, in Portugal with Porto. His win rate for the Spanish under-21 team, so he's great, great success with the kids, right, was he got points per game, 2.89. Now, yeah, it sounds like he just got one draw ever or something. And the first team, he, he, his, his points per game was something like 2.54. Which is pretty incredible, really. You imagine the number of egos he had to manage in there. So, yes, he can manage egos as well. That's good. Spanish national team, lots of different, you know, it's like many countries in one, isn't it? You know, and many of them hate each other. Bringing them together to play as a, as a, as a sort of unit is actually pretty, uh, pretty good. Having said that, he did leave under a cloud with the Spain team because he was interviewing for Real Madrid behind the Spanish team's back. And um, it's not the first time he's courted controversy. Let me put it like that. So he got booted out of the Spanish job. And then when he went to Real Madrid, the Real Madrid fans hated what he did to the Spanish team. Bit naive, isn't it? 
And um, and Surrey lasted, I think, 14 games there before, get, before getting unceremoniously booted out. But I won't read anything into the Real Madrid thing because as Cristiano Ronaldo had just left and everyone gets fired, you know, by, by Real Madrid. They can go through four or five seasons in a in a, in a single season. I mean, go look, watch that Beckham documentary, if you don't believe me, on, on Netflix, which is a fantastic watch. But it's a fucking basket case, the place. It really is. It really is. Um. So, what is the current status then? So, that's all the positives and and touching on a few negatives, but what's the current state of play? Um, He has a verbal agreement. They've agreed terms. I don't know whether it's on the phone or face-to-face, but they've agreed terms. This is similar to what Moyes had, where, you know, they've agreed a sort of rough framework of this is what it will look like. It's not on paper. So, again, it has strikingly... Similar feel to what Moyes was doing when he said he had a contract. He doesn't have a contract. I know Wikipedia got updated to say that he was he had accepted the 2024-25 season uh, manager role at West Ham, or coach role. But um, he might have waited until he's offered before whoever it was updated that Wikipedia entry. Because as you know, anyone can update a Wikipedia entry. entry. But it was carefully worded so it wouldn't be removed because he said he accepted the offer. Right, so you can't really deny that. He probably did accept the offer verbally. And now they're waiting for it to be committed to paper, uh, argue over the contracts several weeks, and that's where I'm hoping these other options will come forward. Let me let me be clear. He's not my primary option. If it turns out being him, fine, right? But uh, but he's not my primary option. I think there are better, better options out there, and so do a lot of West Ham fans. Uh, but how did all this media shit happen anyway? I mean, how did Julian Lopetegui, sitting there unemployed at home, waiting apparently for the West Ham job to come up, has he suddenly become Europe, Europe's hottest property, attracting alleged interest from AC Milan and Bayern Munich? Well, you know, really, is all it was, was a passing interest from those teams uh, as they drew up a list of potential managers that can come in. It's not like they got onto him and started talking to him about a role. That ain't true. And so today's little uh, press story um, about, oh, you better hurry up, West Ham. This is rough. This is my summary, right? A brief pricey for you. You better hurry up and sign in West Ham because Bayern have been on the phone again. Uh, no, it don't, work. it don't work like that. Bayern Munich ain't begging Lopetegui to come and work for them. Don't, don't, don't be fooled with that nonsense. So that is the agents doing what they did yesterday, but now ramping it up because they're getting a little bit nervous. And you'll notice that the narrative of the story has changed from deal close to he's one of the candidates which is what Nick said last night so a few things that concern me about Lopetegui I thought I'd leave the negatives to the end as kind of be a little bit more positive but um, he's known to interview very well he wins over executives he speaks confidently and they buy into it right it's not a bad thing for someone who's a manager but um, he, he's also, once he's signed and once he, he starts working, he becomes a very difficult character to manage, right? Every, every you know, chairman or CEO that's, that's, that he's worked for so far, president, whatever, um, as, 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 well, he's basically left in disgrace and been booted out from what I can see, right? Or in Wolves' case, he just left. Uh, he, he's always demanded significant budgets to spend on players. Now, at West Ham in theory, he wouldn't have the budget because he'd be a first-team coach. Tim would have the budget. And Tim would buy players that he would have to use. But that's not usually his style, let me tell you, right? He demanded £100 million from Wolves to keep him up. And, and he, he signed a £35 million striker, right? And that is what put them into the FFP problems that they had the following season when they couldn't spend money, literally. Yet he ran out, ran away because they wouldn't back him. Well, they'd already backed him. 100 million for Wolves, that, you know, that's a small ground they got, income, blah, 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 blah. It's 100 million is a lot of money for Wolves. It was big backing. And they, they had a, a, a semi-decent team already. He was just adding to it. Um, he does have a few little, you know, idiosyncrasies, if you like. Like, he, he does, he does do the moist thing of bombing players out. There was one player... Who's called Out Nuri, Eight Nuri, the uh, the left back, right? And uh, he's their player of the year at the moment. Uh, Wolves, they love him. He's brilliant. You know, I, I've seen him as well. He is brilliant. I can confirm this. Um, however, he didn't sign him, or he didn't bring him in. It wasn't one of his players. He refused to play him, and um, 
He bombed him out and tried to bring in, wait for it, Aaron Cresswell. So, and this is, you remember all the nonsense from Aaron Cresswell stamping his feet, not being able to leave in the summer. Yeah, that's what this was about, right? So that's a that's a red flag to me. Um, I don't like to see that at all because we can't end up in another standoff situation where you've got, you know, Tim versus now uh, Lopetegui. Right, that that that's not that's not right. Tim's got to be able to bring the players in, and he's got to be obligated to use them. In the same way, he's got to be obligated to use players, blood players from the youth team. He's got to support that. That, but I assume he's fine with that. But towards the end of his reign at Porto, he started buying relative nobodies for big money, and they in the season he got fired. The president said, "I didn't just didn't recognise any of these players," and they came in and after ten games into the new season, he won twice. And he said, "I've had enough. We got so much. We spent so much money, you know. So, so this is a guy who who nearly ruined Porto, right? And he nearly ruined Wolves. Sevilla. Not sure what happened there, but I will say he got booted out when he was when he won two from seven early in the season. And I believe he'd been up to the same tricks again of bringing in unknowns. He starts off by bringing in big names, and then he brings in unknowns." Right, so so this is the kind of thing. He's got no longevity wherever he's been, right? And I'm not saying that's important these days because two and a half years is the average stay for a Premier League manager anyway. Uh, but I do want to hear some things from him about what he intends to do with us, right? So does he expect to have any say over the players that we bring in other than telling Tim what he wants? And the reason I say this is because Guillaume Balague has, has, has written an article saying... This was yesterday, and he's saying, "Oh, he's really close to signing." Blah 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 blah, and it. This was like this. Was, this headline was: uh, "West Ham fans will be delighted to hear this from G- Guillaume Balagay," and um, what it was was him saying he'd already identified four Spaniards, four Spanish players, top Spanish players, to bring across to us. I was thinking, that "Ain't your fucking job? That's Tim's job. If Tim wants four Spanish players, he brings them in. You play those Spanish players." Right, so um, so so yeah, I, I'm a bit worried that he's good at getting jobs, impressing executives. As soon as he's signed on the dotted line, he's got a contract. The real Julian Lopetegu or Lopetegui comes out. He gets demanding. He puts demands on the board, and um, I, I don't see that he would fit in a in a coach, director of football, you know, you know, chairman kind of situation. I think he'd be going straight to Sullivan, just like um, just like his predecessor. Right, and we know that just doesn't work. You end up with a standoff with director of football, a load of players are having their careers drained away. We don't want to go down that road again, right? So I want to see that he is absolutely content and happy and believes wholeheartedly in Tim's ability to bring in the talent that he needs. Right? And um and also I want to hear that he's definitely gonna invest some time in the youth team and bring in some of those players through. Now, if he can do all that. And so we get the football inside of, of, of Lopetegui. And again, his football, it ain't Moy's ball. It's possession-based football, right? So he, it, it's it's technical players in the middle of the pitch who can hold the ball. So bye-bye to Suchek. He can't do that. Uh, probably Jill Jerthy, for instance, might be a good fit into uh, into that system. Maybe Flynn Downs coming back as well would be a good backup. You know, there, there are, we've got plenty of players who could fit into that system, I think. Um, but the, the, the criticism is a, a, a really, really slow build-up. When you take the lead, then it's pass, 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 sideways pass, keep possession, run the game down, which is kind of what some of, a lot of the top teams do. Um, again, it's not as bad as giving the ball to the opposition, sitting back and being a dart ball as they throw shots at you for 90 minutes. Um, so I'm going to just, I'm not even going to prejudge that. You know, I've, I've been told it's not it's not good to watch, but again... I've got kind of a a high pain threshold with with football. I think Moyes took it to the extreme and he really tested my patience with football to the point where I weren't looking forward to going anymore. I hated it. But I've seen some bad football before, like Allardyce, and I never got like that under Allardyce. Even though I didn't like the bloke, he was arrogant as fuck. I I, I never didn't look forward to coming to football or anything like that. So um so I ain't I ain't asking for prime Barcelona here, right? I'm asking for something that's entertaining. And if we can entertain, you know, even a little bit is better than nothing, right? If we can entertain and we can win games and we can progress and we can go up the table 
and he doesn't get all fucking egocentric and start, uh, you know, start trying to take control and bring in players with no name, um, then it could be a decent relationship. But those are my reservations, right? Those are my reservations. Um, and they do worry me. So I'd like to hear some clarity from Tim Stighton, from Sullivan. I know that would be a written statement. And from, if he turns out to be the new manager, uh, Julian Lopetegui. Lopetegui. Fucking name. Get used to it one day. Anyway, look. Uh, by the way, before I go, I'm just going to say this one thing. It's a bit of a cryptic one. Um, but apparently Alvarez got uh, taken off at half time the other day because he went into a, a, a rant in Spanish at half time, and somebody, uh, I think Moyes, recognised the word dogs was used in the rant, and he asked for someone to translate it. And I don't know what was said, but that, that that's literally all I got. Right, make it up as you go along. Right, anyway, that's me done. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you need help doing it, please let us know. It's free. You ain't got to pay anything. And uh, helps us a lot. Please, And also, please hit like and hit the bell notification icon. And um, I'm going to try and get the outro going because I'm using a different setup today. Until next time, see you soon. Come on, your wines. <laughs>